where today I will be sharing my coveted secret of my master chain, really limiting the mastering engineer. So here we are today. This is uh, my uh, one of my templates today. This is my typical template I use for house or hip hop. Um, and you first thing right off the bat, you'll see all the channels minus six dB. If you need to hear it a bit louder, that's what your sound uh, your sound card volume is for. Turn it up a bit, knock yourself out. I tend to work at lower volumes too, not only to protect my ears, um, but just to stay in the spirit of giving that mastering engineer as much headroom as possible. Um, you'll see from my previous video where I'm saying, you know, too much compression. Um, was one of the top five mixing mistakes I made and um, so before you make a comment and say whoa wait a second you got so much compression against all your buses here but you'll notice it's just one and most of the time I'll be honest I don't even engage the buses too much um, I do use the shadow hills on my drum bus because I just think it uh, it does a masterful job uh, at emulating the actual um, compressor, but that's it. And sometimes I don't even bust stuff out to it. I just let it go directly to the master chain. So let's talk about my master chain here. Right off at the top, um, you don't see any crazy reductions in uh, dB for the overall chain because I'm at minus six here across all of my instruments in general. The only thing I do is I shave out 30 hertz, and that's just because of the function of music I'm making as well as in hip hop too. All those low end frequencies add up, and by the time it hits your master chain, you want to make sure that you're creating um, enough dynamics um, in your overall mix. And the bottom line is when you have all of this low frequency stuff, it's taking energy away from the mix, even though you can't really hear it it is taking energy away from the mix um, and I learned that from Dead Mouse and his master class although I don't necessarily agree with a lot of uh, different things that Dead Mouse says I will give props to where it's due this is a great tip and if you don't have this at the top of your chain it's such an easy thing to do I highly recommend doing it so shave 30 Hertz out next piece I have in my less is more functionality is I like to emulate tape I've actually used this in the studio out here in Mississauga at Metalworks where Drake and Prince have recorded records there. Fabulous studio and they actually have this machine there and it's great. And this particular plugin from UAD, the Ampex ATR 102, uh, simulates tape very well. So much so, and you have to be careful, um, It actually, you actually do see a hum signal in here. Let me just pull up my frequency analyzer. Uh, it's very subtle. But here we go. So I boosted it uh, just for just for demonstrative purposes. But this is like hiss you can add to it. And this is actual hum signal that's in the plugin. So when the plugin is engaged when it's on it's it's distributing uh, this type of signal throughout your your chain. Sometimes I pull this back because I don't, you know, I want to get as much energy out of the mix, and I don't want interference uh, from, you know, these types of signals. Uh, and other times I'll just leave it where it defaults to. So that's the Ampex um, uh, ATR 102. And then next in the chain here, and just to be clear, um, I when I'm bouncing out my pre-master, I don't leave this PSP on. I leave the PSP on along with this when I'm working on a beat. But when it comes to sending out my pre-master, I shut this off, you know, and then I, you know, turn on the EQ. Well, the EQ is already on, but the Ampex. Uh, tape simulator I turn on and and again that's the only reason why I have the PSP here is just when I'm making the beat it, it gives me a sense of 
of what the pre-master would sound like without it being the complete pre-master. But when it's go time, I shut it off. And I mainly shut it off because this is, this plug-in on the master chain, I just don't want over compression on the master chain. Um, but I do want this next one, which I think is great, is the SSL G bus compressor. Fantastic plug-in. Like even when um, it's not on and you're running stuff through it you can he you can hear an immediate difference and once you turn it on it I, I don't want to sound um, cliche here but it totally glues things together in a manner that is uh, that doesn't feel super invasive to the overall project I just love this plugin um, and that's why it's there when I bounce out uh, my pre-master so let's leave that on so you get a sense of what my overall master chain is. And just staying with the less is more theme, um, I use uh, this from FabFilter, the multi-band uh, compressor. But I use it just to clean up the uh, low to mid frequencies. It's great. Like I, I, I think it works uh, very well it allows me to distinguish the kick to cut through here this uh, frequency range tends to be very problematic anywhere you know between that 100 hertz to 500 plus hertz there's a lot of collisions happening there whether it be bass kick vocals uh, all colliding at the same time and over here it's just the uh, high end the only reason why you're seeing this is from the uh, Ampex, uh, I have the hiss turned on, and that's where it's uh, pushing that through. But this is great. Uh, this cleans things up and, and makes everything just sort of pop uh, when it comes to my pre-master. Um, on the rare occasion, I will use the Fairchild compressor. I tend not to use this too much, but uh, again, it really depends on the project. And it's more of a either-or situation when it comes to the SSL-G or this. I don't like to have two different compressors, uh, sorry, more than two different compressors going through the master chain when it comes to developing the pre-master. Uh, I love the Fairchild. It takes a little bit of edge off, you know, um, based on the way I use it. It doesn't make things too bassy. Uh, and again, it just comes down to what the project is. But most of the time, it's not on. Uh, this is a frequency analyzer. This doesn't do much. It's always on. I, I just like to know what's happening um, in the frequency spectrum. But most of the time, I'm just relying on my ears. Seeing things visually is helpful just to guide you. But your, in my point of view, your ears are the best judge. And if you're confused, at different points in your mix in terms of what to do close your eyes flip the plug-in on and off and then go with what sounds best and then open your eyes and accept that that's the right thing to do uh, this one affects the master chain but I, I shut it off when uh, I'm doing my pre-master sonar works is a fantastic product I might do a separate video on it uh, but I have this on when I'm working on a song or mixing down a song. Um, this basically tells me uh, what things should sound like, what they're meant to sound like within this room. You take a microphone and stand at 30 different points in your room and it sends different signals out and says, okay, based on how your monitors are behaving, uh, this is how it's being received in the room. So. Just to uh, you know, make it a bit uh, simple, uh, let's just show the correction line so you understand what it's doing in uh, my room. Uh, so here in this line, what we have is just the correction piece. So this is basically saying for each of my monitors, it's doing a boost of anywhere between, uh, looks like, uh, one to as high as seven ish dB, 10 dB in these lower frequencies here, which is, you know, <laughs> phenomenal because if I didn't have this product and I was mixing here, I would be thinking that 
the base is too low when it you know uh, when it's really not so it boosts the signal here to make sure I hear it as it should be in this room so I'm not going to go any further into this uh, it deserves a separate video but I encourage you to look up uh, Sonarworks reference 4 this saves me from having to run to my car and, and do car tests to see how my mixes are performing so I usually shut this off when it comes time for pre-master time because you don't want it to correct um, your final mix. I already made the mix decisions based on how this hears things and that's why I had it on. But when it comes time to bounce your, your pre-master out, it should be off because it will affect the, the sound of the pre-master. So that being said, less is more. This is my overall mastering chain. I shave 30 hertz out. I let it go to tape. I glue the mix together with the SSLG compressor and I clean up the load to mids here. Sometimes I engage the Fairchild uh, depending on the project but most of the time it's off and that's my mastering chain. You'll notice there's no limiters on it and the compression when I do engage it through the SSL it's very light. The needle hardly moves. So that's generally what works for most mastering engineers and from time to time I might get feedback asking to take certain things in a master chain down but again less is more. I know this is a bit of a longer video but I hope this helps you in my journey uh, in terms of why my master chain looks the way it does and uh, I hope this helps you out in your journey as well. Let me know your thoughts. Hit the comments, like, let me know what's popping in the notifications bell to stay in touch with all the other great content we have coming. Much love and respect. Peace.